Do my eyes deceive me, or is that the Traveler and Paimon? Xavier? What are you doing here? I was in the general area, and now I'm in this specific area. There, that's me. So what about you two? We had some questions and thought you might be able to help. Certainly do. I've researched the furnace here in some depth. If there's anything you want to know, just ask away. Like the back of my hand? <laughs> Make no mistake, I have been here a good many times before. Not only that, but I've met people in Inazuma whose families used to live in Tatarasuna years ago. They said it's all true, the history here. Hmm? Oh, well, uh, it's a long story, don't you know? The tale of Tatarasuna starts a long time ago. I'm told that its history is one of the most foremost forging and smelting operations in the nation, goes back around a thousand years. Still, the furnace has had a couple of serious maintenance issues along the way. A couple? When exactly? One was just in the last few years, the other was several hundred years ago. A fun fact, I'm not the first Fontaine tech guy to come and work on it either. There was a guy back then too. They say he was a mechanic who consulted on a technology upgrade. It seems like the technological collaboration between our two nations goes back a long way. How about that? Hey, weren't you gonna ask Xavier something about Tatarasuna? Come on, ask already! Oh, I didn't realize you two were here for a history lesson. Me neither. Paimon doesn't know what's gotten into this one today. Feels like we've been preparing for a history exam or something. Hmm? What brought this on? Did you just wake up today with a sudden burning desire for historical knowledge? Sure, go ahead. A kabuki mono? Hmm, no, I can't say that I have. I do know the word, Inazuman for those eccentric types who always go around dressed to the nines. Just the sort of person that I'd like to meet, actually. But sadly, I've never had the pleasure, nor have I come across anything to do with a kabuki mono where Tatara Suna is concerned. Of course! Don't mention it. Oh, we're leaving? Okay, bye, Xavier! Oh, you're most welcome. More than happy to help. Farewell. Looks like you got all the information you're looking for. Sure, but what's up with you today? Whatever it is, it seems like it's really troubling you. Keep your smile, Spinal Crocodile. No matter what happens, Paimon will always be there for you. Hey, don't mention it. <laughs> All right, let's head off and go meet Nahida. Hear the voice of fate. Speak. It's them! Akaba! Sawada! You're still here? Indeed we are! If you have a moment, we'd love for you to join us once more. We have time! 
What do you want to talk to us about? It's the same topic we discussed last time. Obviously. Still looking for more info about Tatarasuna, huh? Hmm. Should we join them? Unfortunately, we haven't made any real progress. Huh? Oh, uh, of course. I presume you'll want to read mine as well. Here.
Well, what do you think? Hey, Traveler. Remember how last time Akaba was saying how he wished he could gather more information about all this? Well, we just got back from Inazuma. So how about we tell them what we learned? What did you find out? Something big? It's a long story. Basically, we have some friends in Inazuma, and... Wow. So many new details. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Well, well. So it all comes down to one man's desire for revenge. Huh. You heard this from a member of the Amanoma clan, you say? Then I guess it must be true. Ugh. So there's no ghost story here after all. This new information actually lends further credence to my hypothesis. Evidently, swordsmiths were seen as having an incredibly prestigious role in society those days, to the extent that harming them was conceived of, at least by the perpetrator, as a way of exacting revenge against those in power. Yes, yes, okay, point taken, you were right. But that doesn't mean I can't carry on with my novel. And they're back at it. These guys are really into this. Oh, so sorry. Look at us, prattling on about our projects and ignoring you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the information. You're welcome. See ya. Keep us in the loop if you find out anything else. Will do. Quite a story. So, uh, this puppet known as the Balladeer erased himself from Ermensoul, hoping that he could change the past. But how was he even able to do that? As the Traveler said, he very nearly became Sumeru's deity. Admittedly, I remember it a little differently. I don't recall finding anyone inside the machine after we defeated it. Nevertheless, it does make sense. If someone were to successfully erase themselves from Ermensoul, the world would change to reflect the new reality. 
so you believe this person really existed and we just don't remember him because, well, because he literally changed the world? Yes. Theoretically speaking, it is possible to do this. But I'm struggling to imagine the kind of person who would dare go through with it. The Traveler comes from a world beyond to that. That's why there's no information about her in Ermin's soul. And it also explains why any changes to Ermin's soul wouldn't affect her. So if there's anyone in the world capable of retaining memories from a past that has been rewritten, it's you. It's quite incredible when you think about it. Paimon's having a hard time understanding this balladeer guy's motivations. Why did he do it? I can only make inferences based on the information we've been given. As for what kind of person he was, only you remember that. Something else worrying you? Something that you can't share? It couldn't change the fate of the ones who had died, right? Once the balladeer realized he hadn't been betrayed after all, it must have completely changed his view of the people of Tatarasuna. Now he saw them as friends again. He couldn't keep hating humans after that. And if he thought there was a chance he could save his old friends, it would be hard not to try. The story makes sense. Every part of it. The balladeer tried to achieve godhood with the doctor's help. He was unsuccessful, but retained the power to connect with Ermansoul. That power then enabled him to change what was recorded in Ermin's soul and erase himself, even though he didn't have much strength left. Yeah, it does make sense, but it still ended in tragedy for his friends. It just feels so hopeless. He gave everything to do this, but it seems like he got nothing in return. Please wait a moment. I want to check something. Hmm. Found it. This should be the one. It turns out that... I have a strange way of confirming everything she has told us. What is it? A record from a personal collection. It was tucked away in a corner. You should take a look. Is this a fairy tale? Who wrote it? I authored this record myself. 
Huh? You wrote a fairy tale that somehow has something to do with the balladeer? When combined with the Traveler's narrative, it's clear that this story is an allegory. Everything in it is a symbol for something else. Hold on. So this record survived from... the... past past? Yes. Any information about the Balladeer or the Kabuki Mono and other records will have been changed. But I wrote this story in a way that means it was left intact. Changing the information in Ermansoul changes to that. But Ermansoul can't change information that was well hidden in advance. I guess I must have written this story as a backup before the Balladeer entered Ermansoul. That's incredible! What a great idea! And sending the Traveler into Ermansoul with the Balladeer must have been a further precaution. I knew she'd remember everything. This story is abstract enough that it still resonates with the present information recorded in Ermansoul. But if we connect all the different pieces together, the true story that emerges is the one she told us. The now-erased life of the Balladeer. There was once a lone monster draped in fox fur. The monster found a family of foxes, joined them, and they became friends. The monster lived with the family day and night, and everyone treated it as one of their own. Once in a while, the monster would take off its fox fur at night, and lament to itself as it gazed at its reflection in the water. I am a monstrosity, yet they are too foolish to see it. I pity them. But the monster soon found solace when another came to live among the foxes who was not their kin. A kitten, carved from the wood of a white tree who had been abandoned by the humans. The kitten too wished to become a fox, but its tail was too slender and it could not grow a coat of richly colored fur. Yet when the other foxes saw this, they spoke words of comfort to the kitten. Even without a tail and fur like ours, you are still one of us. Furious at this happy resolution, the monster lit a fire on the mountain. The terrified animals panicked as the fire spread. The only way to extinguish the flames was to make a sacrifice. A gray fox stood up and addressed the monster. It said, You are the cleverest among us. Surely you can help us find a way to solve this? The monster smiled, led the fox toward the fire, and murdered it. The gray fox's heart was turned into a beautiful drop of water, clear, spotless, and pure. The monster gave the heart of water to the kitten, telling him, The foxes have decided. You are the one who must be sacrificed. Take this, quench the flames, and die for your fox kin. The fire was extinguished, but the kitten lived. It left that side of the mountain and found a little bird who had a broken wing. The two promised they would spend their whole lives together, but the little bird did not have long left to live. It passed away soon after. After burying the bird, the kitten left the mountain for good. Never again would it cherish a single creature, nor a single blade of grass that stood on that mountain. The kitten spent the nights wandering aimlessly, gnashing its teeth at the moon. How it wished to swallow the moon and devour the moonlight! If the world could only return to darkness, then it would finally be peaceful and content. I will become the new moon, the answer to everything. Then, no one will know that there were once birds, foxes, and cats in this world. And no one can know that they were different.
remember now. This is not just the Balladeer story. It is his very own memories. I made a backup so that it would be preserved no matter what happened. To become a god, he was experimented on and modified countless times. It was brutal torture, and the only reason he was able to survive is that he was a puppet. This memory was extracted from him by the scholars. Presumably, they kept it to have something to defend themselves with. Creating a deity was just the first step. Some of them wanted to be able to control it. That's why they backed up his memory for later use. I buried it deep inside one of my own dreams, and then hid it inside an allegorical story so that it wouldn't be altered. It's hard to believe that this person really existed, let alone that he tried to get rid of us on more than one occasion. Paimon has no memory of him at all. He completely vanished like a puff of smoke. The Balladeer agreed to help me look for information about the Descenders, and although he was unsuccessful, he still helped you. Before he vanished, he confirmed an important detail, that Conria was where your twin first came into this world. We still don't know how the change to Erminso will affect the senior ranks of the Fatui, but in all likelihood, they won't even remember their own harbinger. It sounds like Paimon wouldn't like this guy a whole lot if he was still around. But still, Paimon doesn't like the way it all ended that much better. This is why wisdom alone cannot answer all our questions. We look, we see, and we comprehend. But the question still troubles us. So the answer is not everything. People yearn to find the truth, and then conquer the troubles they face. When you give someone the truth, you give them a chance to choose their own destiny. To others looking on, this may seem like a pointless endeavor, but for him, the chance to act on his desire to disappear must have meant a lot. Never forget that even when we walk beneath dark clouds along a road filled with suffering, the light of wisdom is always there, guiding us toward a better destination. And that is what you have been doing all along. Yeah, Nahid is right. Cheer up! How about we go get something to eat? We can pick up this heavy conversation again later. Good idea. Paimon, why don't you take her out for a walk to clear her head? You got it! Come on, Traveler! You need to get out of your head for a while. You'll feel much better after taking a walk. Let's go get a snack from one of the stalls in the Grand Bazaar! That'll be sure to lift our spirits! It must be really tough being the only one who remembers all that. But Paimon's always here to help cheer you up.
What should we eat first? Figured it all out? Excuse me, boss. There seems to be a small problem with the last bill. Look, here. Hey! Hey, wait! Hmm? You mean me? No, not you. That kid! Didn't you see? Little rascal grabbed my last two fresh Sunsetias and ran off. Look, if you're gonna help out here, you can't keep spacing out, okay? What is it? The work's too boring for you? Or has the big city got too many distractions? I wasn't paying close enough attention. Sorry, boss. I think you're right. Maybe it's the city. It's so exciting. It can be hard to focus. Who's that guy? You know him or something? He's who? You're a strange one, kiddo. You say you don't want any money for helping out here, and then when I actually give you some work to do, you keep letting yourself get distracted. I don't want to take advantage, so I'm happy to pay you what I'd pay anyone else. But if you keep acting like this, pretty soon I won't be able to afford to. No, no, please. I mean it. You don't need to pay me anything. I'm just so thankful you agreed to take on an outsider like me. You're welcome, I guess. But I got bigger things to worry about. Look, we're all out of Sunsetias, and I promised the lady down the street I'd deliver a fruit bowl this evening. I'll leave it to me. I'll find some more. Just a moment. I'll be right back. Stop. I'm gonna level with you, kiddo. I've never met a worker who said they didn't want a wage before. And at first, I got greedy. Couldn't believe my luck. But I figured you'd start asking for something in return eventually. You don't want money. You don't take days off. And in your free time, all I see you do is wander around, taking in the sights. Are you a... a drifter or something? That's right, I am. We can talk more about that later. First, let me get those fruits you needed. Sunsetius, was it? I'll be right back. Hey, what do we do now? Okay, stay out of sight. Don't let him see you.
Yeah, this'll do. Even though you say he's the balladeer, what are we planning on doing? Stealing his sunsettias? Isn't that a bit too cruel? Oh, all right. This should be enough. Hmm. Ah, guess I should wash them before I take them back. Huh? You two over there. Is there something I can help you with? Ha! He spotted us! You've been following me all the way from the city. I'd have to be blind not to notice. Ah, have we met before? No, we haven't met. But you know me? I have no recollection. Uh, are you absolutely sure? Sorry, but I just can't take your word for it. A puppet? What makes you think that? Huh? <gasps> you were right! I guess you do know me after all. That is not something I share with a lot of people. Look, I'm just a wanderer. But seeing as you've gone through all this trouble to track me down, I'm sure whatever it is must be important. Okay, but please let me deliver these goods to my boss first. Are you really working for that guy? He said you don't want any more for it. Is that true? Yes. I ran into him out in the wilderness during a storm. And he let me take shelter in his cart. In return, I said I'd be his helper for a while. That's... oddly nice of you. Let me take these back. Then I'll come with you, okay? Then let's return to the city. Here you go, boss. I'll leave them right here. Oh, you really went and picked some more. Hmm. Who are these two? Something's come up, and they need to borrow me. Sorry, boss. I'm afraid I'll be away from the stall for a while. <sighs> I was just about to pay you anyway. Go wherever you want, kid. Don't waste your time here. What? I get it, okay? You just wanted to help me out, to thank me for giving you shelter from the rain that day. Even then, I don't understand why you're so adamant that you don't want any pay for it. But look, it was pouring down, and there you were, sauntering along without a care in the world, like you had nowhere to be and didn't even care that it was raining. Imagine you were me for a second. It's a little weird, right? Why is this guy traveling during a rainstorm if he's not trying to get somewhere? And why is he taking a shortcut through the open country if he's not even in a hurry? Uh... But anyway, taking you in didn't put me out even slightly. You don't owe me a thing for it. Certainly not all this. Your time is valuable. You know, you should go live your life. But I don't... No, you're right. Uh, 
Then I suppose this is where we say goodbye. Thank you again for taking me into the city. Don't mention it, kiddo. I've run into all kinds of characters over the years. I just hope you find your path. Thank you. All right, done. Thanks for waiting for me. We can go now. What's wrong? Huh? Are you...? Hello. I do apologize for the sudden intrusion. We found this guy in the street, but he doesn't seem to remember anything! <laughs> so, yeah, quite an eventful walk! You say that you are trekking across to that to train yourself. Hmm. Many other Inazumans who describe themselves in this way call themselves Shugenja. Why do you refer to yourself as a wanderer? Well, it seems more relevant in my case. To me, it sounds like a plant with no roots. But these two claim that they know me, and that I have a hidden past unknown even to myself. I wouldn't call it the past, but rather... Uh, this is a difficult one to explain. I don't like to rely on using terms like this often, but in your case, it seems that it ought to be called a previous incarnation. Oh, like a past life or something? Yes, something far more distant than the past. So far away that you cannot perceive it. Okay, I have to ask. What was I like in my previous incarnation? Um... Uh... Oh, okay. I see. You want to tell me, but you can't bring yourselves to say it. Looks like I didn't have the most wonderful existence in my previous incarnation. If it's that difficult to talk about, I have no doubt it will be just as difficult to hear. But I'll be able to handle it. Please, tell me the truth. Is truth something you care a lot about? Yes. Then I'll be straight with you. In your previous incarnation, you did many things that would be considered evil. You nearly died because of what other people did and many died because of you. As a non-human being, you hated gods and humans alike. You drifted from place to place, never able to settle, even where you found status and identity. You adamantly believed that you were missing a heart. <sighs> Actions rooted in persistence sometimes bear bitter fruit. Sometimes, you have to let parts of yourself go, or you'll never be happy. I gave everything I had, but it barely changed history at all. In terms of the outcome alone, that's true. Hmm. I don't think I can judge everything I've heard purely in terms of right and wrong. Each choice a person makes belongs to a specific place and time, a chain of cause and effect. A cycle of karma and consequence. 
That is the nature of truth. If one thing is right, its opposite must be wrong. And yet, dichotomies like this are not enough to explain the world in all of its complexity. It seems like my previous incarnation wasn't the most likable individual. <laughs> We're not trying to hurt your feelings or anything, but... Yeah, we weren't your biggest fans. If we were enemies, why are you trying to help me find the truth? Uh, this is so frustrating! This guy's supposed to be our arch enemy, but now he's just some random stranger we met on the street! He's got so much to answer for, but we can't make him talk because he doesn't remember anything. Uh, what a weird situation. Lesser Lord Kusanali. As the God of Wisdom, I trust that everything you told me must be true. Yes, it's all true. I can even show you the memories themselves, if you're willing. Please, I want to see them for myself. I want to experience my own transgressions. Even though it will cause your present self great mental anguish? Oh, I'm just a puppet. With no heart and no name. There is nothing in this world for me to cling to. To fill the void within me. Except maybe these sins that can never be undone. Very well. As you wish. Wait, shouldn't we go with him? This one's kind of on us for bringing him here. Don't worry. Whatever danger I might face, it's my burden to bear. Traveler, could I ask you to supervise him on my behalf? Oh, good point. Given your, um, unique situation, we'd better keep an eye on you. Understood. <sighs> Thank you. Now, prepare yourselves, everyone. This looks like Inazuma. Right now, you're in a dream I created using information extracted from your memories. These memories will show you the raw truth, but be aware that enemies may react just like in the real world. Please be careful. Sounds like an immersive experience. It's a good thing we came along. You don't need to do this for me. I don't deserve your protection. We never give up halfway. Well, we had to once, but that was your doing. All right. Thanks. Wanderer, this is the Shake Pavilion. In your Baladir incarnation, this is where the Electro Archon placed you after your creation. You had a great many memories here. Is that because this is kind of like his birthplace? You could say that, in a sense. You'll see why shortly. I hear footsteps. This place is huge! I can't believe the landslide didn't fill it in. I wonder who built it? The Crystal Marrow Miners? No, there's no way. Look at this exquisite construction work, and so well preserved, too! No mining crew would be capable of this. Hmm? There's someone passed out on the ground. <sighs> Who are you? Y you're awake! What happened? How'd you get stuck here? A are you injured? Uh-huh. Not a scratch. And these fine clothes. Who are you? This man is Katsuragi, deputy to Torichiyo's adopted son, Mikoshi Nagamasa. He found the Baladir in Shake Pavilion, and took him back to Tatarasuna. And the rest is history. Well, it used to be. In the original version of events, 
Katsuragi was ultimately killed by Nagamasa. Let me get you out of here. Our people are nearby. H hang in there. During the Tatarasuna incident, Niwa was murdered by the doctor, disguised as a mechanic. The Balladier, then known as the Kabukimono, disappeared not long after. As the second in command at Tatarasuna, responsibility for what had happened fell to Mikoshi Nagamasa. But Katsuragi had sworn lifelong loyalty to Nagamasa after the latter had once saved his life. At Katsuragi's insistence, Nagamasa killed him to put an end to the Tatarasuna incident. <sighs> Katsuragi seems like he was a good guy. He looks like a warrior, but he has a kind face. Why couldn't he live a long and happy life? Nagamasa, I found this young guy in a cave sealed off by a landslide. He doesn't remember his name. Well, we need to call you something. I hear the workers are calling you the Kabuki Mono. <sighs> That's fine with me. Katsuragi, report to Niwa. Tell him we have someone new joining us. I was abandoned, like you. I lived here for a while at first, but there's nothing for us here. We can't stay. Okay. I heard my mom and dad used to make swords, but the factory manager died, and then my dad got sick. <coughs> he kept coughing all the time, just like me. Then Mom started coughing, too. But you can't. You promised me. Yup. We're family now. We're gonna be together forever and ever. This child didn't have a name. Or rather, the Balladeer didn't know what to call him. His father died before he could name him. After his mother died, the child stayed in their straw hut alone. Some of the neighbors helped to raise him. After leaving Tatarasuna, the Balladier ran into this child who didn't have a name, just like him. They made a promise to live together. What happened to the child then? He died from his illness while he was still very young. The Balladier came home one day and found that he had stopped breathing. Hey! What's wrong? Say something! You promised me we could be family! You're no different from Niwa and all the others. You betrayed me too. <laughs> <sighs> oh. 
The voices have gone. It looks like the memory ends here. Let's keep going. You do realize you're blocking my path. I come not to obstruct you. I found you. What you are truly is a weapon. One wielded with an iron will. Or you could continue to drift aimlessly. Are you trying to win me over? Fated rebellion has begun. Why not take your place at the banquet and join those who shall feast? This place is dark. Ugh. Paimon knows this place. It's the Delusion Factory in Inazuma. In the original version of events, the Traveler once encountered the Balladeer here. Such a creepy atmosphere. And so familiar. Hey! Look over there! Well, well, my fair lady. Is this rundown factory and these incompetent fools all for me? Wow. You shouldn't have. Huh. What do you have to gain from belittling your subordinates? You might not want to admit it, but you are a part of this plan. Perhaps you find fighting in the abyss to be a more meaningful use of your time? Oh, but of course, even this pales in comparison to being experimented on by the doctor. <laughs> what a sharp tongue you have. Funny how negotiating never seems to be your strong suit. For the task ahead, I suggest you keep your true feelings to yourself. <laughs> Save your breath. I know what I have to do. I'm sure you think so, but I still think you need to hear it. Don't start thinking you're invincible, and don't let your emotions get in the way. Surely you're not worried about me. I just can't have you getting in my way. You and Child never fail to find ways to complicate things. I'm merely lighting a little fire in this chaotic nation. But you, being tossed out like trash, must make you want to destroy it completely. 
Do you remember the last time you were here? That was a lot of swordsmiths you killed. I'm sure the descendants of the ride in Gokaden are still suffering the consequences now. Look at you. Oh, don't get so sentimental. Now, give that poor little tongue of yours a rest and stop pretending like you're above everyone else. Bye then. See you at the victory feast. Poor little tongue? <laughs> She's playing with fire talking to me like that. Who does she think she is? <sighs> Forget it. Someone might find me here any minute now. I should prepare to give them a warm welcome. <sighs> the plot does not end here. There is more of this story to come. Wanderer, are you able to continue? Yes. Please don't worry about me. Why are you staring at me in silence? <laughs> Can't you think of a nicer way to express yourself? I'm under no obligation to be nice to you. Besides, I thought nothing mattered to you except results in your own interests. Isn't that right, witch? <laughs> Muddle-headed puppet. You're only number six because you can take more abuse than other humans. Do you really count that as an asset? You're about as much fun to be around as a raging inferno. But before we murder each other, it'd be best if we finish our duties. in Sumeru. Uh, is that? Considering that Amorta's sage, Nafis, refused to join this project, I'll take part in the experiment in his place. Welcome. I look forward to a fruitful collaboration. <sighs> when do we start? You seem impatient. You should know that becoming a god is far from a trivial affair. The biological transformation is a lengthy process. As such, I too would recommend that we commence as soon as possible. In the event that a successful connection is established, his body will become permanently bound to the machine, and he will be unable to move independently of it. Nothing worse than what I've been through before then, Doctor. You were the most resilient test subject I ever came across. Thanks to you, I was able to garner a great deal of information. Alas, after that, you were under orders to remain in the Abyss. We barely saw each other, and it became difficult to further refine the knowledge I had gained. That was gracefully worded. Ever wonder what they'd think if they knew that nothing matters to you, apart from your crazy experiments? 
I suggest you speak to me in a more respectful tone, Scaramouche. The mere fact of your utility does not make you indestructible. A doctor again? <sighs> that was uncomfortable to watch. That person gives off a very sinister energy. It's normal for him to give you the creeps. He scares the bejeebers out of Paimon. <sighs> Let's move on. You're a god. Do you think I'm evil? If you accept that he is you, just as you are you, then yes, you are evil. In your eyes, are there any differences between humans and puppets? Do you think there are any differences between your present self and your previous and future incarnations? If not, then what are the differences between humans and puppets? Whoever has tasted the joys and sorrows of life in the human realm is human. Whoever has loved and lost, cried with grief, howled with rage at the tragedy of death that eclipses the miracle of life, they are human too. <sighs> I've seen enough of my past. If possible, I'd like to reclaim the sins that are mine to bear. No matter the consequences, I won't run from blame or punishment. Whatever I am due, let it come to pass. Can you return my memories to me? Huh? But won't that mean you'll lose your current identity? I've always believed that human lives follow a set of rules, with each person being a collection of past experiences. As a puppet living in a human world, my life is subject to the same rules. Regaining your memories means reverting completely to your previous incarnation. All the emotions that you discarded will return to you. Are you sure you want to do this? I've lived with a void in my chest my whole life. My creator didn't need me. And ever since I awoke, I've just drifted from one place to the next. But then I met you. And I finally realized that reclaiming my missing sins might be my one opportunity to... Become my true self. I've always felt I have an innate tendency to yearn for something more in a way that goes deeper than for most people. But for all my soul searching as a Shugenja, I've never fully understood it. Looking at it now, it seems that I brought this curse upon myself. So I beg you, grant me this opportunity to gain a purpose, to change my destiny and end my wandering. Very well. Since your mind is made up, I will return to you that which is yours. You have made your decision. Now, take this. <sighs> Set him free? A puppet? What's he doing here? It's... You're a human as far as I'm concerned. Everyone's here. Wonderful. What a fine blade. Nagamasa will be thrilled. This is... my...
all worthless dross will be purged. That's why this won't be the end. Significant past! The wind rises. Evil human! My command, you shall fall. Get out of my sight. It disappeared. Did we win? What did you expect? I'd never lose to that. <sighs> There's the tone of voice again. You're definitely back to your old self. Wait, but it was you inside that thing too. What have you got to be smug about? Sorry. I'm harsh on myself and everyone else. Just the way I am. <laughs> you sound like you're concerned about me. But don't worry. Thanks to you, even if I didn't change a thing, at least I now know the truth. The memory recovery seems to have been a success. This dream has served its purpose. Come on. Let's continue this outside. Welcome back, Traveler, Paimon, Balladeer. <sighs> it feels like we just went on a really long journey. Paimon's exhausted. <sighs> You don't like being addressed by that name? It's fine. But I was just thinking... I should probably change it. After learning about everything the doctor did, there's no way I can carry on using a name connected to him. I'm not planning on returning to the Fatui. And they wouldn't take me back anyway. Recent events will have affected a lot of people. And they might not even remember who the Sixth is. So... You're quitting the Fatui for good? <sighs> it's like you said, Lesser Lord Kusanali. Everything may look futile, but it wasn't completely meaningless. At least I made a lot of people forget about me. 
But that doesn't mean your own past has disappeared. Of course. And your main goal, for which you gave up everything you had, you weren't able to achieve it. I hope you can see and understand that. Changing the world, changing the past, changing the fates of other people, these are not simple things to accomplish. What you are looking for is complete annihilation. But this is just a fantasy. Even if the Balladeer is removed from existence, the world will not heed your will. Indeed. <laughs> How ridiculous. Do you regret doing all that when you've gotten so little in return? Even if I'm completely worthless, there's nothing in the world worth regretting. Lesser Lord Kusanali, you purposely left that information in Nermansol, didn't you? Yes, and I took pains to make sure that you'd acquire that information naturally. Why would you go to such lengths? You trying to win me over too? In all honesty, your past experiences have made you a useful asset to Sumeru and to me. Winning you over was indeed a part of my plan. But before that, I wanted to tell you the truth about your past. If all I wanted to do was use you, then I'd be no different from the doctor. Very clever. I guess you could say that's one of my virtues. Utility to others is what gives me worth. So if embracing my sins is what it takes to make me useful again, so be it. Oh right, I almost forgot. You're the good guys. You're into justice and all that. Sorry if I have a slightly different perspective on things, but I don't feel like I've been duped. The wisest leaders are fated to end up with the best helpers. I can live with that. I'm glad you're able to think of it in that way. Traveler, in the future, I'll continue to search Soul more deeply and see what secrets can be uncovered. Including the beginning of your twin's journey recorded in Soul. What exactly happened before and after that point? I want to know as well. I will try. Traveler. After I dove into the information torrents in Ermansoul, why did you go to Inazuma? So that's how you found out whose fate had changed. And how. Well, whatever your reasons, you did me a favor. And I'll do everything I can to pay it back. Borrowing and returning are the only real relationships between individuals. I'll balance the books one day. Don't you worry. That's not true. A relationship between two people is not simply a ledger that can be reset to zero. I think deep down you realize this. People who show up in your life don't just evaporate like water drops and leave nothing behind. There is no such thing as balancing the books. Some things in this world can never be brought back, and they can never be changed, which is why there is emotion in the human world. Everything that you feel is real and lasting, and whatever is missing in you will not be made whole. To be human is to live with imperfections. You can choose whether or not you want to be human. Hmm. But humans can't live without a heart, can they? Anyway, I gave up trying to become a human a long time ago. You understand what pain is perfectly well, even without a heart. You're just bearing your feelings. The past is set in stone, but you can keep moving on. And the longer your future lasts, the shorter your past will become, until one day, it is but a tiny fraction of your life. It sounds like you've got a future planned out for me. Everything's ended up being pretty darn complicated. Paimon doesn't even know where to start, but... The most important thing now is that you need to follow Nahida. Otherwise, all our efforts will have been for nothing!
Then I guess I'll be helping you from behind the scenes from now on. I'm glad that you've accepted our proposal. Why don't you choose a new name to celebrate? Oh, oh, oh! Paima wants to pick an ugly nickname for you, too! Why? Because... Because... Paima still doesn't like you that much! <laughs> then I hope we don't see much of each other in the future. A name is life's first gift. You didn't say it out loud, but I know that's what you're thinking. <sighs> the Traveler and Paimon have helped you a lot. If you can't decide on a new name, maybe you can ask them for ideas. No! Paimon only does nicknames! If it's a serious name you're after, it's all yours. <laughs> Uh, have you got anything? Are you sure? Oh, all right, if you say so. There, now you have a name of your own. What about a nickname? Are you done yet? Uh, I, still thinking, stop rushing me. Take your time. I don't need to see you again until you've thought of one. Everyone who manipulated me and made me suffer will have to pay the price. You mean the Fatui? The doctor, at least. Now that your stance has changed, I believe your future path will change accordingly. But it won't be immediate. You still need some time to compose yourself. Hmm. One more thing. There are still some descendants of the Raiden Gokuden living in Inazuma. Some of them know. Well, they ought to know about the connection between Raiden Gokuden and myself. I don't plan to leave Sumeru for the time being. If you see them in Inazuma, please tell them that I was the one responsible for the Raiden Gokuden's downfall. Even though the events have been erased from the world, they still deserve to know the truth. I see. That is up to you. Huh? But if we do that, then... It's fine. Let them stab their blades into my chest if they so desire. Maybe that's how it always should have been. What's that look for? Don't make that face. I know what I'm doing. That day will come. All right. We're done here. Goodbye, wise deity. And you too. He's gone! What he went through today would have been like living an entire lifetime in an instant. He'll need some time to calm down. Yeah, true. But even so, after everything that's happened, he doesn't seem quite as fierce anymore. So we can finally go eat? Paimon is starving! Thank you both. I hope you will find somewhere nice to go and relax for a while. I've got it! I can end my novel with some words from Mikoshi Nagamasa. You mean because everyone else in the story is dead? Yeah, I heard that Mikoshi Nagamasa died at a ripe old age. Big fit to be the narrator of the epic. The dark clouds had dissipated, but they continued to cast their shadow in Mikoshi Nagamasa's mind for decades to come. Then, one night, as an old man, he had a dream. 
On the night when that prized blade, the Daitatara Nagamasa, was forged, the people rejoiced, and there was painting, dancing, and drinking. All these expressions of joy melted down in the furnace fire and turned into red clouds that rallied around the final sunrise that Mikoshi Nagamasa saw in his lifetime. Life is a story too long to be told, a journey that you must walk to behold. <laughs> You sound lost and confused. I know why you are troubled. Any who knew of this would find their mind overwhelmed. Huh? Is this how you're talking to us? Unfortunately, the fate of Tevat cannot easily be changed. Perhaps a god may have a slim chance. But for anyone else, who can say? When a small animal runs into a tree trunk, though the tree may sway, it is not displaced. The same is true of fate. Like a vase that falls to the ground. Whether it is broken by a cat or by a bird, the result is still a broken vase, is it not? Who are you? How do you know about all this? History does not change easily, but human hearts can. Believe your own eyes. Only that which you see is true. What is unseen is but an illusion. The voice has disappeared. And who the heck was that? And what were they doing coming out of nowhere and saying all that scary stuff? <sighs> anyway, that face is still lying there broken on the ground. Should Paimon go get someone to clean it up? It feels wrong just leaving it there. Just a moment, Baima will be right back. Okay, that's the end of this world quest inversion of Genesis. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you do enjoy the content, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye!